everyone. I am Samantha Mowat. I'm a clairvoyant psychic and a contactee, and I know that's been a few months since I've last made a video, but to be honest, I've had a lot of contact going on that has made my life a little bit difficult to deal with lately. A lot of the contact that I've had throughout the spring and into the early summer has been in association with hybridization. Now, for my body, when I'm going through something like that, it is a very emotional process having beings come into your home to take you up onto craft, to modify sometimes your hormones, sometimes take the eggs out of your body, and then to show you them when they're a little bit bigger and developing into fetuses, or to show you hybridized children. Things like that not only pay a lot of, or pardon me, not pay, um, take a lot out of your emotional health, but they can be very taxing on the body as well. In the last week or so, I've had two encounters, both of which were associated with my hybridization. And how I find that difficult to deal with is it can be very hard to balance doing readings, seeing family, and really trying to go about a normal life while going through so many encounters. For many of you who are going through ET contact, you're probably like me. In the last, well, this is 2015, this thick of a book full of encounters. I do have a lot of videos to make. I know I'm way behind schedule and that the different beings I work with have been encouraging me to make more. However, since I spoke at Lorian Fenton's conference, I haven't had a lot of the energy to do it because my contact picked up again and that did make it difficult for me to really work through things. However, I would like to take a moment and share with you part of what I've gone through in this last week. I know I'm jumping back and forth between years um, between the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, into 2015, and now 2017, which is much, much later. However, I'm going to be doing a bit of back and forth in the next few months, trying to really catch up to this present day, because one of the beings that I work with has said that they would really like for me to get them all out there as soon as possible. Getting back to the point, earlier last week, I found myself taken onto craft, and what threw me off about this was, quite often when I go, I'm in a slightly lucid state, which is fine. But this time I felt like I was a little more, um, it felt like I was a little bit more drugged. It felt like I was hazy, like I didn't really have my normal sense of control with the situation. Like I wasn't really aware of things as quickly as I would be. And within a matter of moments, I noticed I was in the presence of a female being. Her appearance was cloaked to me. She was appearing to me as slightly humanoid. However, I could tell right away that something wasn't quite right within the vibrational frequency she was emitting versus the way that she looked. However, this didn't really phase me in that moment. She brought to me two large, the best way I can describe them is eggs because they were oval in shape. They were about this big or so. And each one contained a developing fetus within them. And I remember when I looked at this, I could tell right away from the energy that was being emitted off of these eggs that they were mine, and that she was showing them to me for some reason. However, I remember feeling a lot of joy at the growth of these eggs, how well they were doing, how healthy they were, how they were not only taking, into, like, taking life, but they were actually growing in this magnificent way. But when I was put back into my home, and when... I woke up the next morning, I remember feeling very sad about this. I was confused as to why I was shown the eggs because I had never seen that aspect of the hybridization experience before, at least not in a more conscious state. I don't recall ever waking up having seen something like that. And this really played a heavy toll on my emotions for the next few days. I started to obsessively think about trying to get a deeper understanding as to why I saw this. I remember as, as I was holding these eggs, if you were to take a chicken egg or a duck egg and you were to partially cook it, that way it, you're able to actually remove the shell, yet still have the membrane intact, that was the similar consistency or texture to what the exterior of the shell was like. I remember as I was holding it, I had to be very, very gentle because I didn't want for my nails or for my rings to end up popping it. Oh, thank you guys. Um, the other thing that ended up happening with that that I had forgotten about was I had started to ask questions during that experience. I was ask, I remember asking her um, something about, well, they're mine, but who else's are they? Or something along those lines. 
And this being had passed to me a ring that my mother had given me um, a couple Christmases back. And she's like, here, look at this. I'm like, oh, thank you. But I remember thinking, well, why did it show this to me? Why did it give me this ring to keep me occupied? I think it was trying to distract me as something else that I wasn't necessarily focusing on the other component and wasn't asking too many questions about the eggs. But that's okay. Anyway, a few days later, um, I remember having this really weird encounter. I found myself taken in the night again, but this time I was taken by reptilians. And the part that I didn't like about this is I was in the presence of several other people. And this was quite a dark place that they had us. Um, I'm not sure if it was a craft or a city or what it was, because it felt quite large and it felt very dark and unfamiliar to me, somewhere that I haven't been in the past. And when I was there, I noticed that they, that they were lining us up. And these two reptilians were much shorter and stockier than many of the others that I have met. Their bodies were not as physically powerful. Um, they were wearing some clothing. Um, the clothing didn't have any arms like to go and give them protection over their arms. It was kind of like a vest style is the best way I could describe it with a form of pants as well. But I don't remember whether the pants went down to their feet or whether they stopped their knees. But I remember knowing there was some form of pants on them. And anyway, there were men and women with us. And they were injecting something into these people, for some reason into the soft section of their kneecap. And I remember saying, I'm sorry, I don't vaccinate, I don't get flu shots, I really don't want to have this. And this one looked at me, and I remember seeing this really distinct ridge pattern, like it was much thicker and going all the way up from its nose over the top of its head, but it didn't seem to have that familiar strong ridge pattern up here like some, several of the others that I had seen, like the brown ones or the, the green ones. It didn't have that. These ones felt like they were more of a scientific type cast. They felt very intelligent, but they didn't feel like they had the same physical capabilities, which was quite interesting. And I remember I started running away from them and then they started chasing me and I ran for quite a while but I think they eventually found me. I don't remember a lot about that encounter other than remembering that their scale pattern was different. They had larger scales. They were definitely very, very intelligent but not as though they were accustomed to collecting the humans. More so they felt more scientific and more medically oriented. Well, I can see that my camera is actually going to be dying in a moment. So I'm going to have to let you go, but it was lovely catching up with you, and I will try to get done 20 or 30 videos, well, this summer. Take care. It's nice talking to you. Bye.